Yo, 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 it's Jeb in the his house. Uncle Sam on the taxpayer's time. We're the spacemen in our space bridges. We gone from rag to buku riches. Throw your rockets in the air like you just don't care. Throw your rockets in the air like you just don't care. We a G unit, baby. And don't you forget it. We a G force, homie. That's a G unit. We on fire like a blade of home down. See you later. But before all about, let's launch this cap simulator. We a G unit, baby. We, we a G unit. Hello everybody, I Lord Root here, and welcome back to another episode of G-Limit. So we've got a couple of contracts going on right now. Most importantly, and this one is sort of important here, we want to fly by Minmus. And also we want to put a uh, flag on the moon as well. Uh, the Minmus thing, I'm not too worried about. A flyby mission is almost nothing with it, but... With our level of technology, landing on the moon is somewhat difficult. And so, I do want to be mindful of that. Um, really, there's um, other things we could do here, like we could test this decoupler. And I think it might be worth the money, so I'm going to do that. Even though that's going to be quite a, um, quite a tall order. We'll have to send a probe out with that. Oh, uh, but we'll take it for now. Because the starting cash is nice. But really, before we even do that, uh, we do want, you know, we want this guy here. We need to get some science out of this. And we have just enough in terms of science in order for us to be able to unlock the struts, which we're beginning to need. Especially since we've got that one engine. But we'll do that. We'll just log the pressure data here. That's 2.2 science, and we can recover that. That means that we get struts. Though, as for what we might want in the future, you know, that's a hard decision. I think RCS is definitely something that is in our future. I'm not sure. Yeah, there we go. I'm not sure if it's in our immediate future. That's the decoupler that we're testing there. But, um... That means that we've got to unlock this guy as well. Oh, uh, we might do with the landing stuff here. But I think even more important is that we get these engines so that um, we can make better use of some of these things here. And then of course, um, really everything here is something for us. But uh, I'm going to start out, you can see I've got Kerbal Alarm Clock installed because we're getting to the point where that could become necessary. Now, um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this Polaris 4 probe, and for all intents and purposes, if we take this guy, not the tourist can or the satyr, but if we take this guy here, And maybe put in a. You know, we'll grab this Separatron here. It is 75 bucks. Uh, 
and this is probably a little bit on the excessive side. I just want to balance that out. But we'll get something that we can launch there. And we'll close this guy up. And the plan is, of course, to send this on its way to Minmus. Now, it has an excessive amount of Delta V. Really more than we need, if you think about, for just a flyby mission. But, um... I mean, it's not a bad deal, and I do want to get that out of the way. That is perfectly good science for us. And the funds are nice to have. So we'll get that guy going there. And, you know, I'm hoping... Let's just target Minmus here. I'm going to go ahead and launch, because the phase angle may not be optimal, but... You know, it's okay. And I'll see you when I get into orbit. Okay, we are somewhat in orbit. I guess we could trim that a little bit, but... That actually made it worse. It's okay though, we got plenty of Delta V. I'm not quite sure what's up with all the shaking here. But the plan is that we're going to fly around the planet. We're not going to attempt to land or anything so grandiose like that. You can see here though we have a pretty good return trajectory free return trajectory at that. And I'm going to do a little experiment here. I'm going to see, once we get close, and that's in eight days, but I am going to see if perhaps, oh, when we pull this off, Let's see, this ascending node here is going to be pretty close in. I'm, the question is whether we want to bother with an inclination adjustment. I don't think so. In fact, I don't even know if... Really... It's going to make too much sense to do this, because... Um, one of the things that I'm unsure of is whether or not whenever we get this contract. And this is kind of a big deal, if we will perhaps be able to get the other one that says that we should get into orbit. Anyway, I'm going to burn around 25 seconds or so. And the thing is, is that um, I reduced my inclination point that I did, based on the way that I flew in the atmosphere. That say, um, a pretty, you know, nifty thing to do, because it's cheapest to change your inclination whenever you're going the slowest, and you're going pretty slowly in the atmosphere, so it's not a bad opportunity to do that. Well, let's see, how close are we? Uh, let me just kill this here. Okay, we seem to have screwed up our encounter just a little bit. We have more than enough Delta V to get into orbit, perhaps even to land, if we really want to. Okay. Now we get to deal 
with this whole sensitivity to our initial conditions because uh, we are our thrust to weight ratio is actually pretty pretty intense at this point and this thing is for some reason or another there we go Get that down. Oh, it says we're gonna crash into the planet. Well, okay. That's in eight days. What about this guy here? If we <laughs> we're kind of in bad straits here, aren't we? It's just that's in fifty-six minutes. I'll bet you if we adjust our inclination just a little bit. So our apsis there. We can get ourselves a pretty solid encounter about. There we go. That'll do for now. And perhaps we get that any closer. I don't think so. Our inclination, I think, is perfectly fine, however. So, um, see, that's... We have two hours to do whatever it is that we want to do. I'm going to go up here to the alarm clocks, if I can find that. And I'm going to add an alarm for our SOI, which um, should be coming up pretty soon. In the interim, let's take our premier scientist out and do some things with him. And maybe, additionally, take care of that one contract. Because, um, that is the satellite contract that we just can't seem to take care of. But let's take care of the science first, or the moon landing. So there's Polaris 4. Let us grab our lander here, the micro lander. We got a few things to unlock, uh, notably struts, and that is a worthwhile investment. This actually took me a little bit of time to figure out how it was that I was going to do this, largely because of the fact that We've got this issue here to where... Let's take Bill out. Put Bob in. We've got this issue to where... Um, there really is... Not much in the way of... Power here. And I want to... Basically show you what I've done with this stack. I haven't really named it. We've got the two side boosters, of course. But then we've got these little guys here. And um, those seem to have slightly better efficiency than the other engine that we had. And that's something, of course, that we will want to keep in mind. But let's get the microlander out because... Um, Bill certainly needs to have science experience. He is our ticket to very high-profile science. 
so uh, the moon should not be too hard to do. I'm going to target it even though I know what inclination we need to be on. We are more or less strapped in here, so uh, I'm not going to bother with waiting for the phase angles or anything. I'm just going to go. thing worth pointing out, I'm actually going to begin my turn a little bit later than usual, or a little bit earlier, no later, because, um, this guy is a little bit finicky, probably because of all of the drag that we have, all these different components, I thought about wrapping it up in fairing. That is not really any good. So we'll probably see you whenever we jettison these boosters. Okay, there's the booster separation right there. You can see part of the reason for us picking this relatively steep trajectory. And that has to do with the fact we do have a fair amount of uh, thrust-to-weight ratio on this, but in reality, um, it's not all that much. Now, I have a little test save that I use for designing these, and Valentina, in fact, in my test save, is stuck in orbit around the moon, which is not an ideal situation, but it's one we can at least deal with. One that I have no problem with whatsoever, because I think um, if we determine that we don't have enough Delta V to get back, then we can at least rendezvous with the vessel. And we've done a pretty difficult rendezvous with this, as it is, so I mean, it's not a bad little deal. Okay, uh, not as much Delta V as I would have liked. And I'm going in for a more shallow approach, so I'm going to get this set up, and we'll see what we can do about that, see maybe if it would be possible to conserve our Delta V. Okay, there we go, um, that's an acceptable periapsis. We got a day to get out there. I am wholly interested in getting this mission taken care of, so I'm going to go ahead and make the assumption that um, it would be good to just go ahead and get out here. And that's largely because of the fact that I would rather, to be honest, I would rather that Bob is, well, we're a little bit out actually, let's, yeah, we, we'll rotate slightly, just very, very slightly here to get a, because um, time warp is something to think about with this. I mean, 
mean, we don't want to. Um, we don't want to be in a situation to where we have to wait forever to land. And as for where I'm landing, well, that is pretty much going to be on the Midlands because the Midlands, as it turns out. Let me just get this guy set up. The Midlands is the way um, to go because of the fact that we've already got most of our science in the Midlands and um, we could send, I guess, Bill elsewhere. There are more scientific instruments that I want to mess around with. This thing is blatantly lying to me about the burn time. I'm not entirely sure when that will be. I do have a fairly good idea that it's not going to take a minute and 35 seconds to complete this burn. I'm going to do a test burn here just to get an idea. 24 seconds, so we'll burn at 12. That seems to be correct here. There we go. That's good enough. How much delta V do we have left? 31 meters per second. Oh. Um, you know, it could be kind of tricky pulling this off. Or maybe not. Um, I'm going to go for somewhere around in here. And the plan is to suicide burn. We won't get much push out of this stage, but it'll be enough. Okay, we're going to make this burn nice and slow, just because of the, the kick on this engine. I'm rather happy not to have any space debris come out of this, at least. the remainder for breaking, I think. It says our, our distance to our suicide barn is pretty high up, but I, I think it's going to be good for us to go ahead and not trust that. So we need to begin the braking process pretty soon. I hope this doesn't go like the last series where Bo uh, Bob remained stranded on the moon for you know, several episodes, because that would not be very fun for Bob. But I'm going to give myself about a thousand meters or so of leeway. Even less than that, actually. What we're doing here is a little bit dangerous. I am not moving I'm moving very fast here. Now I'm beginning to think Given our horizontal velocity, 
moving too fast, so I'm going to try not to chicken out too much. I don't want to raise our velocity here. So this happens. Uh, not quite the thing I was expecting to go wrong. I think, however, I'm hoping at least we can flip back over. This is one of those times where I really do wish that hard mode did have quick saves. Oh well, um, no harm done. Yeah, we'll just, uh, you know, we'll get Bob here to stick this back in. Like so, in fact, so, before I forget, he needs to take a crew report, and I need to check to see if I can manage to get a contract that will ask for science from the surface of the moon. I'm going to take the sky as well. Oh, uh, let's see. There we go. We've also got this guy here that expires in about a day that we might wish to take. But, um, I'm just gonna take that. Uh, you know, we need to do science on the moon as well. And we are, you know, we got a few things to do there. So, of course, we have the EVA report, the crew report as well. We're not really getting any major science out of that. But on top of that, we do have, um, you know, we have this guy here. If we, we are consuming a lot of power in doing this. It's well worth it, I think. out of power. 
If we take a look at our science, I mean, we're at 62 science, and we haven't even gotten to the good bits yet. For instance, so... Um, this guy here... The materials bay that, whenever we recover it, is going to be worth, um... 60 science on its own. The mystery goo, of course, is, um... Looks like, um, for some reason, we didn't get everything we could out of that. I'm gonna have to take my chances with the mystery goo. I think I'm, there's no point in transmitting it. But Bob, you know, he'll, he'll do the one thing as a scientist he was born to do and that was of course collect the science instead of um okay we'll place the flag looks like our fairing went away let's see no EVA report here that thing's too close to the surface Boy. Oh, we'll name this. We'll call this, um... Bob Kerman. And today, at least the day that this was recorded, was the 30th of May. We'll say first, Kerbal. On the moon. Now, it's the only real tricky part with this guy right here is that we may have to wait until we get into space to grab the data and I think that is precisely what's going to happen it's a shame we couldn't bring this guy back with us although you know we may still be able to Okay, let's not do anything stupid. Let's get back in the lander. There we go. He can operate these experiments from out here, at least. We'll take that data. We'll do the same for the temperature scan and can we get this guy over here oh we sure can and here's the hoping uh, we we can't quite reach that we might have to wait until we get into space here but now it's just a matter of getting ourselves back into orbit and that is may be one of the more difficult things to do. You're supposed to turn over almost immediately when you do that. I mean, we have at least enough Delta V to get into orbit, and I think we have enough Delta V to get home. We need about 300 meters per second. I'm gonna say, at least here, that we're high enough. bring up our time to apoapsis just a little bit. We don't want the margins to be too terribly tight here.
although it's looking like Maybe we could pull that off. But I'm not sure. I mean, we're going pretty fast. Let's just uh, get this guy up into a low orbit. 85 meters per second. Oh, um, margins will be fairly tight here, but it's doable. So I'll do my best to make that happen. Okay, you know what? Uh, we're cutting it kind of close. This is high enough, I suppose. At least it keeps Bob out of harm's way. But we need to collect one part here because I know for a fact that this guy here is not going to be able to make it back. If I could only... Let me just hang on to the ladder real quick whilst I find my mouse. And let's try now to grab this science here. It'll be possible, perhaps, have to come down here to grab it. It's uh, not the easiest thing in the world to do. Because we have Bob on board, we can, if we stay close enough by it, we can restore this. And I don't think, well, you know, I may be wrong about this. I think it's entirely possible. Seven point two science. Um, you know, I'll take it because so um, Bob. Um, Bob can certainly help us out there. Okay, yo. Uh, we will barely, and just barely at that, and not have enough fuel on our own to get back. But, um, we can use that trick with getting out and pushing. Okay, I don't believe this measurement for a second, so we're gonna do a test burn. It says 34 seconds or so, so, um, We'll burn at 16, and we will get out as far as we can. Incidentally, it's worth mentioning that we missed some science on the way in that perhaps wouldn't have been too bad to have. And that science is the barometer science. That, um, that, you know, well, we sent one of our probes and we just never got to it. You know, funny thing about that, we actually okay, there we go. Oh, um, just do that real quick. We're still six or so meters in, and I'm going to 
I'm going to do a little bit of surveying with Bob while we're at it. We're now ready to take that science. Oh, pardon me. We can just briefly grab this. We'll take the data. And it might be worth checking out one more time before we jettison this thing. Yeah, there's a little bit of science we can get with this, so I'm going to get Bob to go ahead and grab that for me. And then we'll get back in the vessel. And before too long we'll be doing the whole getting out and pushing treatment that we did with uh, our other pilot whose name escapes me at the moment because he's not as important. And I don't respect him. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Um. I do not know what happened there. Um. Or for that matter, if we're anywhere. Okay, we're at least close to this guy. Let's. Let's get over here. It's a funny little bug in the physics engine, but it... It's not very amusing to me. Okay, I think this is us about to hit the capsule. I'm spamming off so that we can get home. What did that do to us? Um, believe it or not, not much. So let's just get out to our escape and lower our abscess just a bit. Okay, here we have the task of figuring out what it's going to take to lower us into the atmosphere. My intuitive sense says burn radial. 
And I think 35 is just grand for that. Oh, again, using the decoupler is possible, but not such a great idea. It's probably better just to get this guy pointed in the right direction and to have Bob push as necessary and hopefully not get tangled up in the engine. So I will briefly take care of that. Okay, um, we're at about the right altitude. Um, maybe a little bit high for this, but I will probably see you when we get back. One thing worth mentioning, I think what ended up happening with this guy, I'm not entirely certain of it, but I think that uh, the landing legs or something that Bob, or Bob is getting tangled in. So, um, that's something that we need to consider in future designs when we depend on Bob um, more or less getting out and pushing. But I'm going to get rid of the service module here. Because it should burn up, and I will see you whenever we get close to landing. Well, as luck would have it, um, the KSC is really only a couple of hundred kilometers behind us, thanks to a skip re-entry so we should, with any amount of luck, get a good recovery on this. And we managed to keep both of our goo containers. So let's just wait on this guy here. See how much... Wow. Oh... Uh, it's quite a bit more science than I was expecting, to tell you the truth. Got 92% of the value back, which makes us more than worth it, and Bob gained two experience. Um, let's just see what we can get here. First of all, I am going to unlock these engines here. I also feel it would not be a bad idea for us to get RCS, although um, we'll have to make that one of the later unlocks, I suppose. We could go either with RCS or the docking ports. But that gives us reaction wheels and the inline cockpit, at least. That means uh, we're getting pretty close to unlocking this tier here. Uh, let's just take a look at our contracts real quick before um, we let everything go. Um, we have rescue missions, which might be kind of interesting. And we have this guy here. Which, um, I think will be good for us, because we can use this to, um, you know, we can use this to cheat the contract system properly. So, uh, we'll do that. And, uh, until then, this has been Thy Lord of Root, and I will see you later.